Aloha and welcome back to another episode of Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. I am your host once again, Matthew Johnson. And as a reminder, we are here every Thursday afternoon at four o'clock. And you can also join in the conversation by tweeting us at, at thinktechhi. And you can also actually call in on the phone if you're not into that whole Twitter thing. And you can call us on the number listed below. Yes. Um, so once again, uh, Justine is not here. I know a lot of you are disappointed, but hopefully she will be uh, back next week as my co-host. So getting right to it, uh, Hawaii Food and Farmer Series, we like to bring on the movers and shakers in Hawaii's local food agricultural system. Uh, everything from farmers and facilitators and chefs and people in government just talking about different food issues and how we can make Hawaii a more uh, viable food economy. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and welcome our guest on the show today, Justine Espiritu. <laughs> it is so fantastic to see you again. It's been a while since we've had a chance to talk, at least <laughs> three weeks. Um, so it's great to see you here, and thank you for uh, joining me. Awesome. I have this strange sense of deja vu, but it's been so long since I've been in the studio. Yeah. So thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's great. So there's so much we have to talk about. Uh, because first and foremost, I'm sure a lot of people, when they saw your name pop up on the screen with all of your titles, are like, wow, this woman does a lot. And it's true. <laughs> so let's get a little bit of your background. And um, so you're one of those people that you have your hands in a lot of different pots, I guess is uh, one way to put it. And, um, you're, and whether that's you um, can't stay in place for a very long time, but you just like to be involved in, in trying to really make, I think, uh, Hawaii's ag system a better place. Um, so you're working with me uh, with Oahu Fresh, so you're doing kind of a, some community outreach type stuff. You're also working with the farms, helping to receive product when it comes in there. Um, you're also been working with TEDx Honolulu, um, which is a annual event with also some other events throughout the year where you're bringing on speakers to talk about inspiring topics, which includes uh, local ag, which had uh, Stephen Chang, who's been a speaker on there as well. And you've also uh, a farmer as well. And so we're going to be talking <laughs> about that. Uh, you don't give yourself enough credit for that. But um, yeah, let's kind of go back a little bit and talk about what really got you involved initially uh, working with local farmers. Okay, uh, I guess it kind of started when I was in grad school at UH. I think that was kind of about the time that sustainability was mm -hmm. starting to be this buzzword and this thing that felt really important that if you cared about the world and you, you had to be involved in sustainability. So yeah. I was in the political science department and I just had this general idea of this is kind of the area I wanted to pursue. And I remember very specifically hearing about peak oil mm. and Hawaii's really unique position with being the most isolated kind of landmass and how much we, we rely on importing and oil. And that kind of made a big impact on me. And kind of breaking that down, I felt that the central issue was food and mm. um, farmers. So I thought that I wanted to um, understand more about farming mm. and who farmers are and what that kind of work and lifestyle is. Mm. And so just the natural thing was to kind of like find some farmers and stalk them and, and hang out with them. And I was working at Down to Earth, and so technical it was, term stalking. <laughs> yeah. like so working at Down to Earth, it was very easy to. Um, a lot of the farmers that sell produce there would. Um, I'd meet them and talk to them, and I got really close to Ted Nakamura, who mm. I, I think was a guest on your show. Yeah, he was. <laughs> he was. Yeah. Yeah. So he was a farmer that um, really opened his doors to me to kind of be exposed to that mm. whole experience and lifestyle um, farming up on the North Shore. And you were kind of like interning there or working with Ted? And what yeah, was your, kind what of like some informal was? kind of apprenticeship. And then, and then here's where like my naive mind, how it kind of worked. Mm. I went and like volunteered with him for one day mm. and I thought, oh my God, I want to be a farmer. Like I have to be a farmer. Like <laughs> yeah. the only thing to do if I care about food is to be a farmer. Yeah. So I was like, okay, Ted, I'm going to do it. Like teach me everything and I'm going to come and, and live on the farm and be there all the time. So I started just and Ted kind of really has that kind of personality. I mean, 
even when he was here on the show, I think at least 10 of our viewers just by watching the show went out and became farmers. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, we I can understand yeah, the uh, he's, nativity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I just started working with him on a regular basis and not only learning just the what goes into growing things and maintaining a farm, but also working with Ted, learning about the whole community, a lot of policies and a mm. lot of history that's gone on in agriculture in, in Hawaii specifically and, and started to, now it, it's crazy to think, I, I started representing him since he was by himself. Mm. I would represent him at different community meetings or I'd ask him like, why aren't you going to this North Shore Food Coalition meeting? This is so important, yeah. you should be doing this. Yeah. He's like, well, you can go for me. So I was living in town and I would like drive up to the North Shore oh, wow. to like, go hear what people were talking about. And that was another one of my first experiences of seeing how people kind of participate in their community and how people try to um, contribute to shaping things and sharing their, their opinion, which, which led me into kind of an interest in kind of the political system because it's mm. something that's so kind of intimidating. So mm. also a lot of the work I do and the projects I do is just trying to find ways outside of the political system to feel like you're contributing mm. and to help shape things. So that kind of led into that. But um, So it kind of ties back into the graduate work that you're doing because you're a poli sci. Yeah, 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 yeah. My master's was in political science. Mm, okay, all right. Uh, so yeah, I thought I needed to be a farmer. So, I mean, that's cool because it kind of seems like, and you, you started off at this, like, you know, political structure, kind of like the, the big macro picture of what's going on with the food system. And then you started digging in and you're like, wow, I need to kind of go in and really get deep with it. And so by doing that is actually getting on the land and actually farming yourself. So you're having this apprenticeship with Ted, got all motivated and inspired. And so then you decided that you wanted to become a farmer. Yeah, I mean, I think, like I said, it was just naturally what I thought I had to do. Mm. And so I was, as opportunities came up to pursue that more, I took them. So that was when the Go Farm program was, yeah. was just starting. So I... You were one of, like, the first cohort. I was in the second. Go, the I was second in the second cohort. cohort. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it was it was such an interesting time when these kind of programs were developing. I joke with people that I would never get accepted into the program now because... You know, I, I remember my application essay was talking about, I want to be a farmer so I don't get eaten during the apocalypse uh, and when the foods, food stops coming. I think the Go Farm criteria is a little, is a little it's, different it's now. It's past the yeah. zombie but then, apocalypse. And, but then it's interesting, too. I'm glad I, I still pursued it, even though I, um, you know, I'm not farming anymore. But now looking back and reflecting on it, even with my work with Ted, I think my strength was less in actual fruit food production and farming, but what I also did is I did a lot of peer pressuring and motivating mm. to bring my friends along mm. to, um, whether it was my family, my parents, and my sister, and my cousin, or just friends I have um, here in town that maybe work in a lab all the time mm. or work in a classroom. Mm -hmm. I What I really enjoyed was bringing them out, one, to give Ted help on the farm, mm. and two, to just expose them to uh, what farming is about, because mm. that was also, I think now it's a little bit different. I think everyone, there's so many like volunteer opportunities, there's so many um, ways for people to go check out a farm, and I think at this time that wasn't so much. And so looking back, I think that's a good kind of skill I built up. Mm. And I think that's something I see that I can contribute to agriculture and farming here in Hawaii is to kind of spread awareness about it and create those opportunities for people to experience and people to appreciate the work that that farmers do and I think that's been now that I've noticed or like decided that I don't have to be a farmer to contribute to farming and agriculture in Hawaii and that makes me feel better about being a failed farmer which is okay it's okay I think maybe instead of like a failed farmer, you just realized your strengths. Yeah, and that's nice. That's a nice you're way still to put it. farming, but you're farming people <laughs> to become more appreciative <laughs> of the challenges of being a farmer. Yeah, yeah wow. sure. You can you can use that if you want. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that one's for free. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, but no, I mean that's great because I think 
I mean, even though you, so you went through the GoFarm program and you learned so much by actually getting in there and doing it, so you do have this additional appreciation for how hard it is. So I think when you are talking to these other groups, I mean, you're speaking from um, you know, vantage point of actually going through it and, and knowing um, you know, a good amount of, of what that does take. So you have even much more, I guess, motivation to help guys like Ted out, you know, who are, maybe those are the kind of guys who are gonna be the growers, and so what do they need to be as successful as possible? And it sounds like that's really a role that you've stepped into. <laughs> yep. I think, Some, I think I just do the thing that sums it up, I hate whatever. Sums yes. it up I'm going to respond to that with a yes yeah. or no answer. Yep. Well, yeah, I don't great. know if you ever hosted a show yourself, but yeah, you really hope that they provide more than just a yeah. one well, more answer. Yeah, that, that reminded me of in terms of that experience um, and what I took out of my experience with GoFarm and I, I went um, through into the incubator phase yeah. and had a Libre Farm with my partner Dave and we implemented a, a CSA program. Mm -hmm. And again, I, th I think that whole experience made me also recognize what I really appreciate about farming and agriculture, especially mm -hmm. in Hawaii, mm -hmm. is, and which is why I think I came to food from that beginning of food is really this central part of any community. And it's such a, I want to say nuxus, but I don't think that's how you say it. Any, like ne center nexus? nexus yeah nexus yeah nexus well, i like your pronunciation <laughs> much better but anyways um it's such a it's such a way for people to connect and intersect and and what i've also kind of like what's helped me on this show of connecting it's not just about the farmers it's about the distributors it's about the partnerships that farmers have with chefs and with restaurants and for example when i was doing whoops <laughs> Okay, I'll tell you more about my, like, revelation. It'll be a cliffhanger. I had a revelation, and I'll save it for after the break. Well, it's exciting to hear about this revelation, and we can't wait to hear about it. Um, but we're going to go and take a quick break, and we'll be right back to hear more about it. Aloha. I'm Kawe Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m., we address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet. Please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, exploring the world we live in, recognizing the changes around us, and looking into the future of our lives together in these islands. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Hello, ha, how you doing? It's me, Angus McTech. Wishing you to welcome and join us to see us on Hibachi Talk on Think Tech Hawaii. Join my co-hosts, Gordo the Tech Czar and Andrew the Security Guy every Friday from 1300 to 1345. We look forward to seeing you. We'll talk tech and we'll have some wee bit of fun. And remember, let your wing gang free wherever you be. Aloha! Aloha and welcome back to Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. I am your host for, I guess, the month until Justine comes <laughs> back. Um, once again, we meet here every Thursday at 4 o'clock. Somebody please tell my co-host that. Um, so we were talking to Justina Spiritu today. Yes. Uh, a motivator and a connector in um, our local food system. So you're kind of talking about um, an inspiration that you had? No. I think it was a revelation. Revelation. <laughs> revelation. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So you're talking about this revelation that you had with some of your yeah. prior work. Yeah, so with the CSA I was doing with Libre Farm, um, we partnered with... It, the whole kind of logistical part, part of it and kind of the marketing part of it is what I found I really loved with, mm. with my farm. The whole mm. watering thing and like mm. planting thing, was, I, was, I was, it was a little harder for me to commit to. But when it came to seeking out partnerships in the community to try to promote my product or connect people to my product, that was really fun. And we had a really beautiful relationship with... Um, God, what was it? I want to say the Buddhist ca the cafe. cafe. No, the cafe uh, on uh, King Street. Yeah, now I can't. Bodhi, Bodhi Cafe. Bodhi Cafe, Bodhi yeah. Cafe. Um, yeah, with Bodhi Cafe. And it was just an example of what a symbiotic, the prevalence of like symbiotic relationships I see in agriculture mm. that I don't see so much in other industries and okay. in other industries specifically that I've worked in. Yeah. Um, for example, you know, we had 
we pe folks were picking up our CSA, and so we were bringing in customers to mm. their cafe, yeah. and that was that was great. And they also had this nice kind of like display where we got to put our produce, our like beautiful bags of produce, on their tables, and that was putting our word out there to the customers, and and just that mutual cross promotion kind of thing just felt really good. And I've seen that in multiple ways throughout the farming community here yeah. and it's just feels really good inside and that's that's interesting that you kind of see i mean going back to what you see as your strength but that's always been a challenge you know i think for farmers in general is that it definitely takes a skill set just to be able to make a crop actually happen like you said like the irrigation and the soil management and nutrient management everything that goes with it i mean that's all a full kind of gig in itself and a, a certain mindset that you have to be in and then you have to turn around and be this like promoter yeah uh it just really seems to go against the typical personality of what you may have in a farmer who's spending a lot of time probably alone um <laughs> working on their craft no it's it's true i mean it's it's one of the challenges but some people really thrive on that and that's what they like about that farming part of it and then if you say hey but now you need to go to a farmer's market and you need to convince people to come buy your products well they're like well my products are great yeah. you know and like yeah. like why do i need to convince someone about it but i think we're seeing as as part of this local food movement is there does have to be that education like we can't just assume people are going to say oh yeah uh one if if the product is more expensive than you know something coming from outside of hawaii um, you know, why, why would somebody want to pay more for that? And so I think that's probably a role that you know, you've been taking on. And, and I mean, you had, you've done work at the farmer's markets. So you've done work with um, Small Kind Farmers before, uh, who's also a guest on the show before. I don't know if oh, you saw that oh, episode. Yeah, you should check it out. You'd be yeah. happy to see uh, Yang. Um, so you've been at a farmer's market, and you've been successful there and seeing how farmer's markets work. Um, and then also you've been working with me at Oahu Fresh. So you've obviously been, um, you know, as being good friends, you know kind of what we're doing, but now you're getting more involved uh, with this community outreach part of it. Yeah, well, that, th with that note, um, and what I've also recognized on the show of having all the different types of guests, it's such a diverse array of positions and organizations that are on here. And so when we're talking about that... Well, you do watch this show. <laughs> I do, I do. Oh, I've wow. seen a couple episodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when we talk about, you know, someone taking on that role of, of marketing and outreach, I think what we've kind of seen as well is that in every position, there's a responsibility or there's um, a way folks are doing that. And it it's really helps each other. Um, for, and it's, it's getting more creative and things have to be more, I think farms have to diversify and the whole um, focus on trying to promote local products has to be more diverse. And it, it's interesting, you know, even with the work you've done and with how you've supported the farmers markets, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I love... I love the farmers markets, um, specifically farm lovers, mm -hmm. uh, the work that they do with putting on the festivals mm -hmm. and really creating like the community atmosphere around local food um, to kind of promote it and help really help farmers with marketing their product and, and setting up that environment. And speaking of Yang and Small Kind Farm and getting creative as well, the whole kind of ag tourism bit mm. of farms. Um, where they are trying to diversify and, for example, create kind of events and the farm to table events mm -hmm. is great because you're, again, it's, it's a way to bring people onto the farm and shape, reshape their perception of what farming is, of mm -hmm. just to like see the scenery and, and hang out with the farmers. But I think those kind of events are another example of the community really supporting each other because when you have an event like that that uses the product and the farm, they're also connecting with a local chef mm. or a local musician or again, these kind of like small scale community events that are, are helping and like lifting the awareness of multiple kind of ventures and organizations and stuff. Mm. And I really see that in agriculture and farming here, but ne not necessarily in other mm. industries. So it's it's cool to watch and and something that we've talked about I think with other folks that is interesting to me is that local food I think has has 
blown up all over the U.S. of, mm -hmm. of being really trendy kind of thing. And what we've talked about is that in Hawaii, though, it's like really actually like a dire situation. Mm. And so it feels really good to be working on something like that, which is also interesting too. like going back to where, again, I thought I had to be a farmer. And so mm. then I'm just like on this path of, well, I guess I'm going to be a farmer, but let's just say yes and do everything. And, and working with TEDx Honolulu, mm. Because that's just like a cool platform, I think, to highlight. What is TEDx again? Just so TEDx background. is like the local version of TED Talks, okay. which is um, pretty well known throughout the world. I think it started in, it's like an annual event in the TED conferences in California. Mm -hmm. And the original kind of topics is, is folks just kind of doing presentations on, or presentations or talks or what's, I don't know, presentations yeah. on, what is it? Um, TD, education, technology, design, technology, education, education and design. Mm -hmm. So they have really like renowned speakers on each of those subjects mm. um, speaking. And what they've done is allow communities to form their own version of that. Mm. And now the subjects have um, diversified and, and varied and you have topics on all kinds of things. So what I love about this, this platform is that each community can use it as a stage to highlight the individuals and the ideas specific to their community, mm -hmm. to put it on the stage. And because it's associated with TED Talks, it gets this international kind of network and um, recognition. And the TEDx communities, of which I think there's like 1,300 now in cities mm -hmm. across the US. But you really have a good opportunity to maybe get your individual, your idea, your talk on this international platform and I think specifically for Hawaii that's really cool because I think Hawaii being Hawaii in this like tourist mecca mm. is there's there's a very standard picture of what Hawaii is to people mm. and the, I think the TEDx platform is a great way for the people of this community to put out there what's really going on and, and what kind of innovative ideas and things that are outside of the, how people perceive it. Mm -hmm. And so it has been really cool to incorporate my work with agriculture or the mm -hmm. interest I have in that and like bring that into TEDx by um, some of the initiatives I've done with my committee that I'm with, the sustainability committee. Mm -hmm. um, we've kind of, our team throughout the past couple of years have just pushed the idea of using local food right. and organic food and um, supporting our local farmers and caterers um, for featuring that, featuring that for our event. But I've also made an effort to peer pressure a lot of my friends or colleagues in the ag community to audition and be one of those key presenters to put their ideas out yeah. there. So again, since it is local food and, and food issues are such a huge part of being in Hawaii, I think it's great that we've been able to put that on like the TEDx platform. Mm. And so Stephen Chang was mm. one of those folks I peer pressured and said, you have to audition for this. And I think he was, he was also on the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think so. I think yeah. so. And so, and it's cool too, because then he, the, the whole kind of TEDx platform too, is that your speakers, then you select a speaker to kind of curate their own smaller event. And so just in March, mm -hmm. um, Genesis asked <clears throat> Stephen to kind of curate his own TEDx panel oh, to neat. kind of pursue his ideas even more. Mm. So it's just great to see those two worlds colliding and perpetuating. So that's been, that's been fun. And see, so, yeah, I think you have that uh, special ability to mm, influence people like Stephen Chang to get up on stage and present his ideas. Because, you know, he's, you know, a busy guy and probably very humble with what he does. And to, you know, build that relationship with him and, and building a trust thing with him to be able to get him and, and prepare him to go onto a platform like that to, you know, present his ideas. And so people know what they're doing and what, you know, um, himself and the rest of the team at the Incubator Program are doing that's super you know, influential because people need to know what's being done and, and how can these programs be supported. And the fact that you're you know, facilitating now Steven to kind of take that even further. And now he's kind of taking ownership of bringing, you know, his networks together to present as well. And it's just kind of creating that spider web, uh, uh, Justine influenced people going out there and presenting their ideas. 
Yeah, and I mean, I think that's the fun thing with doing this show as well, is just motivating people to kind of share their story and get their messages and kind of background out there. Mm -hmm. So that's why this show has been a fun platform as well. Nice. Hopefully sometime you'll come back and, <laughs> and join as a co-host. You'd be a great co-host. Maybe. Maybe. You'd be fantastic. <laughs> um, and that's what's also interesting, too, because so now, and, and moving on from, uh, we had Justine the Farmer and then Justine the, the presentation organizer with TEDx and also a community facilitator with Oahu Fresh. There's still way more that you're doing, and so you're, you're constantly networking with different groups. So uh, Greener Reader is a, a program that you initiated as kind of like a fun thing to do but also um i guess influential at the same time where it's a whole concept of encouraging people to read but also reading with a purpose um so you want to talk a little bit about that yeah i i started the book club i mean for a number of reasons so One, a greener reader is a book club greener reader is yeah. a book club um, under the category technically of focusing on sustainability, which is really just a broad array of topics. And it was uh, a way to kind of pressure myself to learn more. I need to like create these structures or environments mm. that make me do the things I think I want to do. But mm. then I need like a deadline and expectations. So then I have to like build a club around it or something. So you just want to stay in school <laughs> the entire do, life. I do, I yeah. do. That's what I've always <laughs> said about it. Um, but yeah, I, it's my way to try to re read more and read about topics relevant to uh, Hawaii. And then sometimes I fantasize, like, I wish I, I should just make book club all about books about agriculture mm. and farming and to really get in depth to And you've that, included that. books, you know, in agriculture. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But um, again, I, I feel now like my main drive is... Because that's really the purpose of this show, is really <laughs> to nail down what is, what motivates you. Yeah, what motivates me. Yeah, where, is, where is this all? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because I'm interested. I'll figure it out by the show, don't worry. Um, in ways of getting, I mean, because people feel so apathetic of being in charge of their community or influencing mm. their community. And I think, I mean, that goes a, along a lot with agriculture mm. as well. I think... Sometimes people feel helpless or that they can't, they can't create the kind of food system they want mm. in Hawaii. But, but that's not true, and I think so many projects and collaborations are proving that wrong. And I'm just trying to, like, I'm trying to see how does that actually get activated in a community. And so I try to explore different ways to do that. And my book club, in my mind, is a way to do that. I think you just start with bringing people together um, to read and then see where it goes from there. I like I the sound of that. Does that make that. sense? <laughs> like, no, it, it absolutely no. does. And we're going to make it even make more sense when we come back from the break. And we're going to talk more about, you know, how do all these things that you're doing kind of lead towards this larger picture? And we want to hear from you what that is. So we will be right back after a quick 60 second break? Yeah. Okay. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, offering lifelong learning from passionate hosts and fascinating guests ready to explore and explain Hawaii's place in the 21st century. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel, and I'm the host of Research in Manoa, Mondays from 12 to 1 on thinktechhawaii.com. Take a look at us and learn about uh, geophysics, learn about planetology, learn about the ocean and earth sciences at UH Manoa. You'll really enjoy it. So come around, we'll see you then. Hi, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. I'd love you to join us every week, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. for Ehana Kako, Let's Work Together. We report every week on the good things going on in our state, as well as the better things that can go on in the future. We have guests covering everything from the economy, the government, and society. See you Mondays on Ehana Kako at 2 o'clock p.m. Until then, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Aloha and wah wah. Oh, I try to combine too many words together at once. We are back with Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. I am your host for the month, 
Matthew Johnson, and we're here talking today to Justina Spiritu, who has agreed to come back and be a co-host for the show, <laughs> starting in next week, idea. Thursday. Okay, and yeah, we'll keep exploring those ideas. <laughs> Um, so we're kind of talking about all these like cool different things that you are involved with that kind of circle around not just like agriculture but really community development and, and getting community just doing things and things that you personally want to be doing you want to see for yourself but then you want to invite you know friends and, and other community members to, to join you with and so kind of looking forward in our last segment which I always like to look forward as kind of like the future of this. I want to hear more about, you know, where where do you see yourself going with the work that you're doing, and and where do you see um, what what needs to be done with uh, Hawaii's local food system to become even better? Yeah. So let's start 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 uh, with yourself, and then we'll just. Go from there. I feel like this is a trick to get me to like commit no to choosing Oahu Fresh over Bike Share Hawaii. No, it's just a trick <laughs> to actually get you to come back next week as a co-host. <laughs> um, for me, yeah, it's been a fun journey to join Oahu Fresh because, as I like to say, when I met you and heard about Oahu Fresh, my like immediate reaction, I think, in my time of like naivety and wanting to just like see an idea and be like, that's what I'm going to do. And, and I met you and heard about what you're doing with the wall who fresh. And I just like immediately had this sense of jealousy and I wanted to like, jealousy. like kill you and take over your business and be like, this is mine. Like, cause it was, it was a cool thing that was like established and, <laughs> and, um, you know, this, this CSA program of dis distributing local food around. Mm -hmm. And instead of murdering you and taking over your business, I've joined to yeah. collaborate with you, which wow, is a, a, it's, it's just a like, so way much friendlier <laughs> way. so much better. Yeah. And so it's cool to, to join and, and see how things constantly evolve and see how Oahu Fresh has evolved from this um, CSA out of the back of your truck to a, a distribution center to now building out the Oahu Food Hub mm. to really be a central space, again, for collaboration and innovation that is, is sparked through just really like the presence of people being together. And again, that's, that's what I enjoy in projects and communities. And I see things like the Food Hub um, really like incubating that. So it's great to be a part of that development in, in multiple forms, whether it's doing the outreach for um, getting in touch with schools to say, mm. you know, let's do this fundraiser where your fundraiser activity for school is um, giving access and selling these CSA bags of local and fresh food, or if it's with Hawaiian Airlines and giving access that way, or if it's um, collaborating to get resources to build out a commercial kitchen mm. that opens possibilities for um, not only farmers to create new products but new businesses to start mm -hmm. and and do different things so I mean I guess just what I see for the future and what Hawaii needs is just kind of constant collaboration and constant combining of resources mm. because I think there's so much going on and there's so many organizations that I think are doing as much as they can and reaching as far as they can as just a, a single organization. Mm -hmm. But there's all these different ideas and projects and I think that we've seen implemented in other places across the U.S. that the small organizations that we have in Hawaii don't necessarily have the capacity to take on themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think especially for Hawaii, you need that kind of collaboration and mm -hmm. collaborative um, collaborative effort. And I've seen that uh, Oahu Fresh and the Food Hub is that nu Nuxus? Nexus? Yeah. Nexus Center? Ne Nexus. Cent <laughs> Nexus. But I like, and I like Nuxus. as well as what I've seen develop out of the Go Farm. Like mm. I'm so happy to have gone through that and what you know, and we you had on Sean and La Amea talking about the co-op, mm -hmm. which was such like an organic formation where we had this this class of folks, mm. you know, La Amea and all his and, and myself and 
the people together in this cohort that wanted to start small farms yeah. and they knew you know we, we knew Sean and Green Rose was at the market and that just natural idea to come together to form a co-op mm -hmm. just those kind of natural combinations mm. I think that's like the time is happening for that and so it's great to participate that in, in multiple ways cool no that was actually really clear and succinct and um, we have to kind of continue expanding upon that. <laughs> um, so no, I mean that that's that's neat, and I think it's you know, and I think the same thing for me too. Like, I kind of jumped around and doing different things, and and you're also involved with this as well, uh, doing grant writing, so helping farms access USDA Farm Bill funds, and then doing these uh, ag business. Uh, training classes and then doing the CSA and the food hub and then doing this show and it's it's kind of like when you hear it that way it sounds all disjointed and and kind of out there but really it's all kind of going around this underneath this umbrella of yeah just trying to tie some of these pieces together and also help make connections between organizations that are like, hey, you guys are doing this, these guys are doing that too. And, you know, sometimes um, there's an automatic click and there's a, you know, gelling that happens. And then um, sometimes it may not be the right time or, or whatnot. But you know, I think it definitely needs people like you to, one, to be networked enough to be able to go out and see kind of like the larger landscape of what's happening. Um, because a lot of times the people that are working on these very specific projects are so deep into that project that maybe they're unable to kind of recognize what else is being done where you know they may see something as oh that is you know a challenge where actually maybe if they look at it a little bit differently it could be something that supports what they're doing which i think with that stronger. with that example mm -hmm. i think when we're talking about the food hub, your your issue and problem, when you couldn't find a warehouse that yeah. fit your needs, you found this warehouse in Evil A, which was pretty, which was kind of too large for your own needs, yeah. but you pursued it and secured it, and it's turned into this opportunity mm -hmm. for a lot of other businesses that maybe you weren't even aware of at the time and maybe aren't directly related, but together it's forming this supportive environment of opportunity and possibilities. Example with Aloha Harvest mm. is not someone I think we necessarily thought you would right. work so directly under, but they need the space maybe as like a landing and, and kind of distribution center themselves mm. temporarily. Mm. So that, like exactly what you said, like forming these, these networks have to be in, in place. So when you have these problems or opportunities, someone can recognize it and, and connect people, yeah. which then also reminds me mm. of the grant, the EPA grant, that oh, we did. Oh, <laughs> um, how do we forget with, about that? <laughs> with, with HCDA. So as representing Oahu Fresh, I partnered with David Simonich, mm -hmm. Daniel. <laughs> I just yeah. called him David. Yeah. You're combining okay. all these guys that <laughs> yeah. you work with. <laughs> um, well, we were able to put together a application for, and we were awarded a, a technical assistance grant from the EPA to do food system planning. And specifically for the neighborhood of Kaka'ako. Specifically for the neighborhood of Kaka'ako. And, mm -hmm. and the way we're trying to like build our, our stakeholder network, though, is um, definitely bringing the, the direct uh, stakeholders within Kaka'ako, but wanting to involve other folks that... Um, other folks and institutions and farmers that aren't necessarily centered in Kaka'ako. Mm. But since it is such a small... State, it's a small island. The mm. farmers that we have on the North Shore, the farmers that we have in Waimanalo, are going to be directly affected by what kind of systems we have in place in these urban centers. And, mm. and having um, these, these cities in these urban areas access, figuring out how they're going to have access to local, local and fresh food is important. But what, what that reminds me of in my whole kind of like journey of kind of exploring food and local food and the local kind of food economy in Hawaii is when I started when I started kind of apprenticing under these farmers including Ted and including Daniel Rudoy who was my mm. go farm oh, my the, first go farm uh, instructor, instructor. Yeah. who was another farmer and I 
again, what attracted me to farming was the perspective that farmers had because they're like working with the earth, because they're working outside, because they have this connection. I was really attracted to that. And I was very obsessed with seeing you have to you have to go represent yourself at this community meeting. You have to right. talk to these people. You have to do you have to be on this panel. And they were so reluctant. Yeah. And what I and I've like I didn't respect that, which is rude of me, but I just felt so much like, oh, you have to get out there. And that was something that always drove me crazy is that these these people that I thought were so in tune with something amazing were such like isolationists. Mm. And I'm happy that I'm like, because you're obviously very good at that. That's like a natural thing for you to go do. I mean, when you recognize the importance of it, but also it's your it's a something you're comfortable with doing. Yeah, and I think a little... Even though you were extremely nervous before the show. Because <laughs> even though it's like I would see people that had it kind of together, but they just felt so... Um, like the system was so against them or the system oh. isn't... isn't You can't work within the system to make the kind of change you wanted. So their thing, which is like respectable, mm. is that they're just going to create their own space where they're going to be doing the things that like they feel good about and create the life and, and community that they want on mm. a very small personal scale, which is admirable and which is like the opposite of now what I, what I feel like I'm doing, like trying to do with this EPA food planning mm. process. Because again, like I said, even for me, the political system and trying to make change or trying to create the future and community that you want seems so hard and you seem so disconnected. But slowly through the work I've done with the different networks within local food and then through grant writing and through accessing this technical assistance that's at the federal level, mm -hmm. the, the goal of this project is to bring stakeholders together to make it a really community driven like brainstorming, future imagining kind of session that we can create a document that um, has an implementation plan and has a comprehensive kind of mapping of the different organizations and the different projects going on. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of those people that are kind of isolationist and don't know what's going on over there or don't put themselves out there to be recognized so yeah. people don't know what they're doing. Right. So like my dream is to have this document that kind of that gives a little bit more of showing that network and, and showing all the networks and potential connections that we have in Kaka'ako, on Oahu, and then this document we can use to access more resources because again, when you kind of combine the efforts and projects of multiple organizations, you are a stronger applicant in, in a number of ways. You have a stronger project mm -hmm. and I think you have more access to resources. And then when you have ideas, and the resources to implement them, and you have this like official document that says this is what Oahu wants to do, that's when you get to implement these projects in your community. And mm. like without even knowing it, then you are like, you've put kind of like your vision into play mm. and you can make a difference mm. in your community. So almost sounds like maybe this EPA project is is really like the ultimate umbrella to include all these other projects that you're doing. Like you bring your Green Reader to it, and the <laughs> TEDx, and the Wahoo Food Hub, and Y Food and Farmer series, and your all of your feelings and emotions. <laughs> into this document that you're talking about. Well, it's not like the Justine document. Right, that's right, That's right. separate. That's a, that's a different document. I'm but <laughs> we'll have you on the show for another a version of that. Yeah. But that's fantastic and so exciting to hear about all the different things that you're working on. And definitely want to have you back on the show. Like you're rushing right now. <laughs> very soon. I have someone whispering in my ear that we need to wrap it up. But thank you so much for joining me on the show. Great having you here. Thank you. Hope to have you it's great. more often. It's great. And um, yep, so thank you for joining us. Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. We'll see you next week, Thursday afternoon at 4 p.m. Aloha.